Penny for him. Mm. Yeah, I was just thinking about those blessed pigs. Hard not to think about them. Two hundred of them. I know George is trying to pull a fast one, but I can't work out what it is or what to do about it. Yet. Come on, sleepyhead. <laughs> Primrose? I could always sell them. True. I don't want to sell them, cos George is up to some sort of racket. I want to find out what it is. Ma, oh. Primrose is in her room and look. Oh. <sighs> what is it, Ma? She's gone after Roger. To Liverpool. Oh, my Lord. Juliet was right. Parting is such sweet sorrow. I shall return. Fear not, Edith. Georgie will be back. The time alone will be such torment. I must go. See you in a fortnight. Hmm? Thank you. Excuse me. Can you tell me where the cave club is, please? Address. Don't fret, Mrs. Larkin. You'll find her safe and sound. You mark my words. Oh, Vic, I can't help but fret. We don't know she got as far as Liverpool. Oh, no, no. Depends upon how much money she's got. If she's got enough money for the train. I'll just check. Yeah, good idea, Mom. Good idea. Of course, she might have taken to this new hitchhiking lark. Makes your blood run cold to think of her on this new M1 thing, getting a lift from one of them, them, what? Turn up, boys. Yeah, that's them. It makes you break out in a cold sweat, doesn't it, Alice? She's got some money. Really? Not a lot, but enough for the train. Look, about five are in there. Look at that, look. Pigs. Pigs again. Oh, Liverpool. <laughs> Who in their right mind wants to go to Liverpool? Excuse me. How much is it to get in? It's free, love. It's the only way Rog can lure him in to listen to his grotty poetry. It's not grotty. Oh, goody. As it happens, I don't think it's grotty either. In fact, I love Roger's poems. You're pal of Roger's? Yes, very much so. I'm a fellow poet. Well, go on in. He's only got one or two more to do. And the boys are on. Great. I'd like to do a new poem now for you, Paul Tilly. <clears throat> knowing that you love me, Tilly, knowing that you care, Makes my life complete, Tilly. Makes my garden fair. I can truly say, Tilly, say it cause it's true. Life was truly silly, Tilly, till there was... You! Ow! That's 
dragon's blood. Don't tell me they've got dragon's blood up there, cos I won't believe you. All right, then. You won't need those. And you won't need petrol. They've got plenty of petrol in Liverpool. Oh, and you certainly don't need that. Sorry, Primmy Girl, got no milk. Primrose. Yes, Roger. Primrose. You've got to go home. No, please. I want to stay here with you. Primrose, look. I... How old are you, girl? I'm 16 and three months. Please, please let me stay. But, I mean, shouldn't you be at school? I've taken all my exams, so there's nothing much to do there. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Phone your dad. If he says it's OK, we'll find a room for you. Oh, thank you, Roger. Thank you. <laughs> and poetry, and there's a Scrooge. What? Of course I know what I'm doing. I just worry about you all the way up there. It's, what? Oh, talk English, Primrose. This is the most happening place in the world right now. Happening. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I promise, Ma. I'll phone every night. And tell Pop not to worry. I'll come home soon. Yeah, OK. Bye. I can stay, but I have to be back for the opening of the pool. Kids. <laughs> she get it from me or you? Hey. Her spirit. You, of course. Oh, you always were a right little mover. <laughs> Even when I first met you. Still are, come to think about it. <laughs> Give us a kiss for Primrose. Come on. Mm -hmm. That's it. Oh, Give us one for Marriott now, will you? <laughs> come on. Give us one. Come on. Anyway, there's Montgomery. I forgot. There's the twins. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, well, God's in his heaven and no mistake. Primrose is safe. Paul's underway. George. Oh. George, George, George. Every time I start to get a bit calm, I think about George and his porkers. I'm going to phone him. Hello? Oh. Hello, Mr Larkin. George, no, you've just missed him. Two weeks? No, 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 it's nothing important, Edith. No. He is coming back, though, isn't he? Of course. My heart would break if he doesn't. Mine too, Edith. Mine too. Yeah, bye-bye now. Bye. He's not there. He's gone away. Hardly surprising, is it? What are you going to do now? Uh, there's only one thing to do. Go and see the bloke who brought us the pigs. What's his name? Ramsbottom. So where did you get the pigs from? From Mr Lawrence's place. George's place, where he was holding them for you. That's it. They're the same pigs. Oh, look. You was to pay me, which you did. I was to give him the money, which I haven't yet, because he's off at the moment, and I was to pick him up again from you in a month or so. 
And take him back to George's place? No, take him to the next bloke. What do you mean the next bloke? I pick pigs up here. I put pigs down there. I do what George tells me to do and nobody's complained yet. I see. Well, thanks very much, Mr Ramsbottom. You've been a great help. You're welcome. Oh, um, George's address. You haven't got it, have you? I seem to have lost it. Yeah, I think I've got it here. Hang on. What's that? Yeah, there you are. Mount Usher, Chillum. He's never there, mind, but that's his address. All right. Thanks again, Mr Ramsbottom. All right. Cheerio. I'll see you when I come back from the feed. Don't you bet on it, son. Basically, there's only one lot of pigs. Right? And what George does, he just keeps selling them on. He sells them to one poor gullible geezer after another. And then every time he buys them back, he pockets half the government subsidy. So that means he gets 500 smackers every time for doing nothing at all. It does sound very legal to me. Well, of course it isn't legal. He's conning the ministry out of all them subsidies, isn't he? And in muggins here, he's being used. And I'm paying to feed his pigs into the bargain. Very clever. Why do you want to go to all the trouble of buying Tom Garnet's place? Oh, he hasn't bought Tom Garnet's place. He probably just leased it from him. Mm. Excuse me, excuse me, is Mount Usher near here? Mount Usher, Mount Usher near, near here. here. First night, past the parish church, Gartmouth. Yeah. You're not talking, are you? You're not begging? No, certainly not. Because if you was, you'd best carry on past Mount Usher. Orca's doom, they call it. Got a fierce dog, is it? <laughs> Much worse than a fierce dog. But if you're not orking and you're not begging, you might hazard it. Thanks very much. Take a look round the back, Mole. You stay here, all right? Good afternoon. I was uh, wondering if Mr George Harron was about. You're not one of his wretched associates, are you? Because if you are... Uh, no, 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 no. No, no, I'm not. No, no. Well, what do you want? <clears throat> well, it's rather a delicate matter, actually. <laughs> it's always rather delicate where George is concerned. Does he owe you money? Well... Serves you right for even bidding in the time of day. Toad. It's a bit more complicated than that. It's always complicated where George is concerned. He owes me money. But don't worry, I'll take it in skin and hair when I catch him. Do you know his whereabouts? No. No, I was hoping that you might. Haven't the foggiest. But I'll find him. And if I catch him with another woman... Many a good hanging saved a bad marriage. Marriage? Excuse me, are you Mrs. Heron? To my everlasting regret. Gorgon, producer, <laughs> say goodbye to our visitor. Look 
It's like it said, Ma, George is not only a con man, he's a married con man. A bigamist. Yeah. Oh, poor Edith. Yeah. Someone's going to have to tell her, Sid. What are you looking at me for? Well, she trusts you. She ain't got no one else. Oh, dear impromptu fellow. Come in at once. How delightful to see you. Pigs all right? Oh, yeah, all right. A bit poggy, but all right. Oh, it's just a sign of natural functioning, eh? Mine must be supernatural, then. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> Edith. Is there any chance of a snifter at all? Uh, um, Irish all right? Oh, yeah, fine. It was a present from George. George. Good old George. Edith, about George. Fond of him, are you? Oh, besotted. I've never been so happy in my entire life. This is for your ears only. He's proposed. And I've accepted. But you can't. I mean, he's all... It's marvellous. Absolutely marvellous. There are no words to describe my happiness at the moment. And not only that, but George has let me in on the ground floor for some of his investments. Investments? The pigs and the farm. The farm? Hmm. I put a little towards the purchase, and George, in his generosity, has translated that into half ownership for me. Isn't it wonderful? Unbelievable. And the pigs? Oh, I put up half the money for the pigs. Every penny I own. Do you mean to say you own half my... half his pigs? I certainly do. Isn't it terrifically exciting? Do you think I could have another one, Edith? I think I've developed a bit of a thirst. You didn't tell her? No. Well, we're going to have to do something. Just couldn't do it, Ma. I couldn't hurt her feelings like that. Edith's got to know the truth about George. Oh, no. Make matters worse. He's taking her money and all. Never. Oh, well, we're going to have to get that back. And do it somehow without upsetting her. Yeah. That's the most important thing of all. What's it to be? All we've got to do is to find a way to save Edith's feelings and get her money back. And I think I've got a plan that's going to sink George. But we're going to need the help of Angela Snow. A preacher in the pulpit roars with all his might. Sing a glory! Sheila, 
Oh, yeah, we've well, got to dance them tonight. Yeah. Hi, Roger. Oh, hi, Primmy. I wanted to show you this. I wrote it this afternoon. I took your advice. I'm trying to use my own voice. Oh, that's great, Primmy. Great. I'm going to look at it later, OK? But we were just going to go and have a dance. I'll see you in a bit, OK? something passionate, I suppose. No. What do we say to convince her that he's really upped and left forever? Well, I thought that missionary idea of yours was a good one. All right, then. Right. So, George is a returned missionary. Home for a break. When he was tempted by, um... Hang on, I got the phrase. Uh, uh, bountiful charms. It's very good, Ma. Yes, that is very good indeed. Yes, he was tempted by Edith's bountiful charms. Ah, mm. But now, in the cold light of day, he sees the the error of his ways. Error of his ways, and he has to return to his calling, which is his missionary work on a sheep farm in Patagonia. Patagonia. Where's that, then? No idea. There's an expedition going there, look. Oh, right. Pat. Pat. Uh, uh, go. Um, yeah. E-R. Right. Mm. And he has left tickets. For Edith to have a week's holiday in Paris. Oh, lovely. And, and, and he's going to give her back her money for her pigs and for the farm. He better. Farm. Now, what we need is a good ending. Yeah. Oh, here, look. Marge column is a letter. Marge, da da da. As long as breath persists in this frail body. Frail body? <laughs> I'll hardly describe yours as that. Nay, till the myriad stars fall from the sky. Myriad stars? It's better. They shall remain in the innermost sanctuary of my soul. A place that is forever sacred to the memory of my own. Rebecca, it says here, but we'll put Edith. Better still, put Yum Yum. No, yum Yum's too much. No, you have me sign it Georgie Porgy next. Oh, there. Now, I'll write it up nice and neat and get it to Edith. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you looking for Angela? Oh, uh, yes. She's away on holiday, I'm afraid. I'm minding the house. Let me guess, you must be Pop Larkin. Yes. I am indeed, yes. I'm Jasmine Brown. I've heard a lot about you from Angela. Have you? Have you really? Yeah, I'd like to book one of your Silver Wings luxury breaks in Paris, please. Oh, expense is no object. Uh, a week, yes. Yeah. Oh, that sounds perfect. Yes, it's uh, for Miss Edith Pilchester. 
what a hilarious idea. Mm. You're a wicked man, Pop Larkin. Oh, I know. You'll do it, though, won't you, Jasmine? <laughs> Would Angela have done it? What? <laughs> Has Pinocchio got a wooden nose? <laughs> oh, well, in that case, George's goose is cooked. <laughs> Angela and I graduated through virginity together. <laughs> Dear. <laughs> You're terrible, you are. You're worse than me. You're worse than Angela. No one's worse than Angela. But I try. I believe that. Come on, boys, hurry up. Mara will be in a minute with Edith. That's it. Push it right the back there. That's the one. Georgie. It had a missionary's face. Pop remarked on it. Indeed he had. What softens the blow, Mrs Larkin? What makes it more bearable is that he had to leave for such noble reasons. Yes. You're very noble. No point in hanging around here, Edith. No. We don't want to miss the week of a lifetime in Gay Parina, do we? No. I shall try my utmost to enjoy myself. It's what George would have wanted. Bathing us just adds that extra bit of tone to the pool. Oh, that'll impress your family, won't it, Ma? Yeah. Ma's got her family coming up from South End. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Anybody package? Mm. Come on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go on then. Oh, that's it's lovely. Grazie, yeah, signora. Yeah, so it's all ready then, is it? You, all right. <laughs> yeah, not leaking or nothing. Got the bang in them, <laughs> you. <laughs> we put the diving board on last thing, then it'll be ready for tomorrow. Oh, good. First class. Oh, thanks, Now let's hope to God that George comes. Oh, he'll come all right. I want to collect his half of the bonus. <laughs> bonus? He'll get a bonus all right. You mark my words. I know my brother was going to town. Riding the billy goat, leading the hound. With the hound dog bark, a billy goat jump. I you know Roger doesn't love me. Don't ask. I just know. I've known him years. He's a little dote, but he doesn't love you. But why? Aren't I attractive? Oh, you're a gorgeous girl. 
I think he's potty myself. But that's Rog. He feels all paternal, like, wants to look after you, not go to bed with you. I love him. I love him. I haven't heard that word in years. It's nice, though. It's nice to meet someone who's 16 and still believes in love. I'm too old for all that stuffy stuff. So? What? So what are you gonna do? I'm gonna go home. Tell Roger. Tell him I've gone home. To listen to the nightingales. Sydney. Hello, George. What are you doing here? Oh, nothing wrong, sir. I'm afraid it's Edith. What? Well, she's um. Good God! You you don't mean she's dead? Dead? No, 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 no. She's not dead. No, she's um. Well, she's run away, fled, vamoosed. Vamoost? Edith? Is this a joke? No, no, it's not a joke, George, no. That's why I've waited here, as I've done for the last five nights. Because I wanted to prevent you coming back and just, well, finding her gone. Because I knew what a shock that would be to your system. Good God, man, you're not telling me she just upped and left. No, I did. She'd be very impulsive, can Edith? I mean, you thought you knew her, but... Good Lord. Yeah. Midnight flit. What was I saw the lights. I thought it was the Aurora Borealis, but no, they were the headlights of the Leyland Tiger coming to take Edith and her chattels away. <sighs> Women. <laughs> Women. Your pig's very quiet tonight, George. Mm. Uh, didn't you leave a, a note at a forwarding address? No, nothing. She's got a sister in Alberta. Alberta? Canada. She might have gone there. Say, George, your pigs are very quiet tonight, aren't oh, they? They're fine, they're fine. Sydney, what am I going to do? Well, you look all in, George. Why don't you come back to the house for a couple of snifters and a welcoming bed? Well, that's very decent of you. It's not all that late. Ma will still be up. Come on, you follow me. That's an excellent idea. I'm dog tired. I'm driven from near Cambridge today. Well. Uh, you mustn't let it upset you. You'll be all right, I promise. You need me to take care of it. Nothing's going to happen. I'll call you soon. Oh, hey, I'm all right, Jim, go back home. Get you. Look, Ma, look who's here, look. Oh, George. Good luck in. Oh, come and sit down. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, terrible about Edith. Uh, most bizarre, unexpected. Woman in love, you see, George. Driven over the edge by passion. Terrible blow. Your pig's all right. Mm. Oh, perfect, George. Yeah. Pass their exams with flying colours. A few more days and it'll be bonus time. Of course, tomorrow we're opening the pool. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, in fact, that's why I came back today. Couldn't miss that, eh? I should hope not. Now we've got a very full day planned. Mm. Oh, splendid. Which we fully intend that you will play a major role. What you need now is a good night's kip. Yes, well, uh, I am a bit weary, I must confess. He can stay here, can't he, Ma? Of course he can. The attic room's all made up. Got another guest upstairs, Jasmine Brown. Lovely girl. Your pot's a dough, but she's all on her own, bless her heart. Oh, yeah, she's lovely. Anxious to meet you. She's heard a lot about you, George. 
Where's she by Joe? Yeah, she's asleep now, but don't worry, you'll see her in the morning. to the slaughter. They don't suspect a thing. <laughs> Lambs to the slaughter. <laughs> How do I look? Perfect. Come on, you must have one of these. Yeah. Lovely. Just have a call from the station. Mrs. Harron's arrived. A taxi should be here in ten minutes. <gasps> ten minutes, right. Quick. Now, bottoms up. You upstairs on the double. Make sure you waylay George. Consider him waylaid, Pop. Good girl. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 they told me. I was just on my way to the pool. Oh, <laughs> steady. You've been having one of those locking specials, I know. Gosh, no. Uh, George Harron, by the way. I could do with a cooler. You look marvellously cool, George. Love your outfit. Really? Stunning. And that cravat. I adore men in cravats. Let's sit down. Here, where it's quiet. Well, indeed. Why not? It's all round the bend, it's all off you go. See you around there. Mrs. Harron, very pleased to meet you again. Where is he? Eh? Where's who? My blasted husband. Oh, him. He's probably round the back, admiring the swimming pool. Swimming pool? In this dump? Yes, indeed. Today's the official opening, in fact. Yes. <laughs> We're playing blind man's bath later on. I demand to see him. Certainly. But first, permit me to do the introductions. This is Flo. Flo. This is Mrs. Harron. I've heard so much about you. Oh? About your power over women. Oh. Oh? Uh, who told you this? Oh, people. People, eh? Men or women? Both. I understand you make all the men blisteringly jealous. And all the women... <laughs> well... <laughs> uh, I've had my moment. I'll bet you have. And still will, I hope. I wonder if I shouldn't show my face. Larkin will be wondering what I've got up to. I'm a guest, after all. Oh, the Larkins never worry about things like that. Guests here can do what they like. Disappear into the woods, play hide-and-seek, sit on the stairs. <laughs> it's all free and easy here. You know, of course, that they're not married. Good Lord. Larkin by name, Larkin by nature. <laughs> <laughs> Family motto, eh? <laughs> oh, I love sitting on the stairs, don't you? <laughs> I think that one. 
Not in there. Oh, that's funny. He was here a moment ago. Well, he'd better be here. It's his skin or yours. But you must be stifling in that jacket. Why didn't you take it off? Hmm? Or better still, why don't we go for a swim? Oh, topping idea. Uh, but I haven't got any trunks. Oh, that's not a problem. Pop has some spares in the bathing huts. And we won't be disturbed there. Splendid idea. Splendid. Come with me. Oh. Here we are. I say. <laughs> we can get you changed in there. <laughs> no, he's not in there. No, definitely not in there. No. No, I wouldn't go in there. <laughs> oh, awful pigs. Oh, really? The Larkins have a boat. Perhaps we'll take a trip later. Hideaway. Such a quaint idea, undressing in a bathing hut. It's more private, I suppose. <laughs> Certainly. You can do what you like in here and nobody would ever know. Trousers first? Really? Oh, red ones. Swap. Sure, he's here. Oh, absolutely. I can't imagine where he's got to. And Mrs. Heron, uh, would you like a drink or a sandwich or something? If I thought for one moment that I'd been lured here under false pretenses, Mrs. Larkin, I can assure you there would be hell to pay. No, he's definitely here, Mrs. Heron. I think I'll look over there again. Excuse me. I'm sorry, my dear. I'm looking for my husband. Not guilty. Good Lord. That was my wife. Your wife? Uh, estranged. Uh, long story. I, I mean, she'll kill me, literally, if she finds me like this. I mean, good Lord, she, she might come back. No, she won't, George. Larkin. You're safe in here, George. That is, of course, as long as no one tells her. This is a setup, you cads. Mm. Can't you understand? If she catches me like this, it'll be a scandal. It'll be divorce courts and photographs in the newspapers. It'll be the end of our joint bank accounts. You brought this on yourself, George. Let's have Edith's money for the pigs. I haven't got any money. Oh, well, in that case... Mrs. Harry! No, no, wait, 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 wait. wait. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, Edith's money for the farm. Oh, come on, be fair. She's only out there, George. How do I know you won't tell her I'm in here? I'll keep my word, George. Never broken it, ever. I solemnly swear I will not tell your wife where you're hiding. What about her? I swear, I won't tell her where you are, unless, of course... Come on, George. It's your only chance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And mm -hmm. my money for the pigs. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
Best of luck in Patagonia, George. Patagonia? Yeah. Best thing you ever did was go in there. Come along, Jasmine. Bon voyage, George. Please, can I have my trousers? Almost time to christen the pool. <laughs> it's going to be a grand finale and no mistake. I can explain. No, no, business here, you know. Women. Especially for the occasion. I was going to call it In at the Deep End, but I think I'll just call it Welcome Home. Oh, sounds perfect. <laughs> <laughs> there she is. Here, oh, there. Come on. <laughs> Oh, I'm surprised. Oh, how kind of you to come and meet me. Not kind, Edith. Just good neighbours, that's all. <laughs> well, how was Paris? Oh, it was marvellous. Quite marvellous. Mm. Although not the same without George. No, of course not. No. Thank you. Edith, about George. He wrote me a letter and, well, he asked me to give you this. Oh. oh what a kind and generous man he is. Was. Oh, I can't help feeling that life won't be quite the same without him. I'd agree with you there, Edith. Still. You want to get in the back of me, Edith? Still, yes, come on. come on. That's it. In you go, Edith. That's it. That's right. Up you go, Mark. Oh. Hey. <laughs> now then, Edith. What do you say to a nice bit of ham and a snifter back at Shane, eh? Oh, Mr. Larkin, you are kind. Not kind, Edith. Not kind. Just good neighbours, that's all. 